This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP.com. I'm Mike Keith and back by popular demand in the Snickers hot seats. <laughs> Coach Dave McGinnis from Titans Radio and a man who has just announced that he has entered the transfer portal. It is Rhett Bryan. Wow. Yeah. That's news to me. Where am I going? <laughs> You're going to the Cardinals Network. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> okay. No, Dave Pash. Hi, Dave. I, I wanted to ask you about that, though, because signing day has just finished, and apparently recruiting never ends now. Doesn't would, seem to. Would you be a college coach today? I mean, would you if, if, you, that, that, if that, you had a choice? That, oh, no, absolutely not. Yeah. Now. The thing about it is when I first started my coaching career, the thing about the, the allure of the National Football League, of course, clearly is the level of competition sure. as high as you can get. But in, back in the day, the pay discrepancy between what you were making as an assistant in college and what you could make in the National Football League was pretty great. And the other thing that was really attractive was the National Football League had a blanket retirement package. Everybody was on the same retirement, and it was – outstanding and so you know but you wanted to you wanted to work at the highest level nowadays i mean you start looking at salaries now especially in power five schools for assistant coaches it's way up there sometimes even supersedes what's being paid in the national football league but the recruiting part of it that you are bringing up that's brutal it never stops never stops never it's and, it's brutal and you're having to recruit your own guys Constantly, and uh, I mean, you, you've got. I mean, you you worked at the University of Tennessee for a long time, and you know, recruiting was different then. You used to sign a national letter, and you were done, and that was it. And then you had your guys for three or four years, or sometimes five years. It, it has gotten, and we, I think, all three of us probably have people that we know now that are coaching in Power Five schools. That they will tell you that the recruiting part of it, the consistency, I mean, the constancy of that. Where's them out? And you were part of it, though, when you could sign national letters with different teams in different conferences. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Did and you ever have a crazy win like that where a guy had signed two or three national letters and you didn't know exactly where he was going to show up? Mike, I recruited in the Southwest Conference, so you know the answer is yes to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you could only sign one per conference. Yeah, but the Southwest Conference, had, had the, it's like the Southeastern Conference – People wanted those players, so sure. you would sign yours to you, but then other schools in the country would still be coming after them. So absolutely, yes. Wow. It'll all be in the book. When are you going to do the book, for real? When I'm done with everything, with everything, when I'm but done. But, I mean, with, our idea with Titans Radio is that you're never done, that you'll just go until. Well, I, I would, I would that, 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 thank you for that. But I, when, when I'm, when I, Finally finished, because I'm going to tell complete, unabashed truth. Unabashed truth. And you can't do that if you still want to be within the confines of what you're doing. And I wouldn't be that disrespectful to do it while I was still very active doing what I'm doing. But uh, I've got a lot of notes. I'll let you and Rhett read them sometime. I, I would. You hear a lot of the stories. I've As the kids say, the, the receipts have been kept. Well, you, 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 I've told you guys a lot of the stories, and I, and and I enjoy doing that because you're both very interested. And sometimes you look at me like Coach Mack, what in the world? But they're all true. Well, I mean, from your time as a Southwest Conference player to being a college coach to being with those crazy Bears, and and those guys were way out there, completely. And you were with Ditka. Yes, who's, I mean. I, I'm down for any Mike Ditka story I can ever hear. You love Mike Ditka stories. I love Mike Ditka stories. You really do, and I love telling them to you. Because I think the thing about Mike Ditka, that, and Rhett can speak to this too, Mike Ditka is a separate category of human beings. Like, he was in the movie Kicking and Screaming. 
<laughs> with Will Ferrell. <laughs> yes, he was. And there's some stuff that happens in the movie, and you're like, you shouldn't say that. You shouldn't do. But because it's Ditka, it's okay. Well, it's it's not that it's okay as much as it is. It's Ditka. It, that, so because yeah. it's Ditka, it's like that's a separate category. It's like, well, it's Ditka. You know, Ditka does the. I mean, I'm fascinated by Mike Ditka. Well, he was a fascinating, and he is a fascinating person. And he, the the thing that that, that was so unique about uh, Coach Ditka, the persona out there. I mean, and and I mean, he looked like a bear. Oh gosh! And the the persona of him, and and just and just and just just the swag that he carried with himself, with just being Mike Ditka, was so much fun. Was so much fun to be around. But he, if you were one of his people, he was so good to you. I mean, I can't even begin to describe the things that he would do just off the cuff that you, you know, you would go, wow, this is really cool. And it's so, and there was a real dichotomy between his public persona sometimes and then what he really was. Because as, as, as big a personality as he was, Mike, I promise you, his heart was, is, was huge. He took care of so many people and so many things way on the down low that nobody would ever know. And it was it, it was pretty amazing to be around. I'm fascinated by Mike Ditka. I am too. I, I, I Every time he talks about Mike Ditka, I think about the one time that we had an interaction with Mike Ditka in the preseason in, in Chicago. And you remember, do you remember this when this happened? I don't. Okay. So Larry Stone, the godfather of Titans radio would, sometimes do this thing to me when we were on the road hey give me the biggest name in the building i want him for pregame no pressure oh sure whatever you know and sometimes i would bring him <laughs> commissioner tagliabue right. and uh, we would get commissioner goodell well this was i think I, I guess this was after he had been released from his duties in new orleans this is early 2000s and we were playing them in the preseason and so i see him i ask him he said sure kid great We'll do that. No problem. And I said, we can record any time. That way we don't, we're not bothering you with whatever you're doing today. And Larry is in there preparing broadcast equipment set up. And I said, Larry Stone, I'd like you to meet Mike Ditka. And we had him on pregame. I mean, where was I? Maybe you were out. I don't know. Maybe you were swimming in the lake out there. I don't know. But I mean, this happened. I know it happened, but I don't. <laughs> I, I, where was but I? to see Larry. <laughs> I mean, like the color left his face. It was like, oh my! But to, you're talking about he looked like a bear. He, that's the first time I'd ever met the man in. Per I was like, my lord, he was a prototypical tight end in the '60s. Well, but he wow. would be a great tight end today, coming out of Pitt. absolutely. I mean, what he could do. It's like you talk about uh, Reggie White. Would Reggie White be a great player today? Yes. Yes. Would Jim Brown be a great running back today? Yes. yes. Mike Didka would be the best tight end in the league today. Yes. It's what Coach Max says about Danico Autry. Danico Autry, he says, can play could have played any time, era. any era in the NFL. Yeah. Some of those guys are – but uh, Coach Ditka was – is special. I'll say one more thing about this. I'm most fascinated by him – with his relationship with Tom Landry when he went to the Cowboys as a player and a coach. Because from the outside, that doesn't make any sense. Mike Ditka doesn't seem to be somebody who would have fit with Tom Landry in that era. And yet right. you say he held Tom Landry in the absolute highest regard among people that you ever heard him mention. The highest regard. And he, he, he's often said about you know, how, how much Tom Landry really kind of, kind of saved him. You know, kind of, kind of saved him, and 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 at times, uh, you you understand that Mike Ditka is, as I say, at the at the at the at the base is just is just a really really good human being, but you know there are certain times in in all of our lives where we need a little bit stronger of a guiding force in somebody, and that's that that was Tom Landry at the time. Think about this, Mike. Mike Ditka sat down and hand wrote a letter when he was working for Tom Landry. To George Hallis, because you know they didn't end up on great when he traded him to Philadelphia, because you know Mike Ditka, remember in his in his contract negotiations, it said that Hallis, uh, you know, threw around nickels like they were manhole covers, right? And, you know, and so it it was a it was an acrimonious split, 
But he wrote a, a hand wrote a letter to George Hallis saying a lot of things as far as about, you know, at his at his core he would always be a bear and if he ever had a chance he would love to come back as the head coach of the Chicago Bears. Now think about that. You know, it wasn't one of these and of course in the age that we live in now, but but a handwritten letter just expressing his true feelings and then George Hallis hired him. And 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 Mike was never a coordinator. He was a special teams coordinator as a tight end coach. Uh just think think about think just think about George Hallis the intuition that he had too into the person and what he needed well, and what to resurrect hard, the bears and what a hard head he was and what a hard head Ditka was or is and for them to come together after how they had broken up yes because Hallis's whole thing was the bears have to get back to being the bears that was it that was it the Bears had to get back to being the Bears. And Mike Ditka brought the Bears back on an international scale during that period of time. And people always ask me what it was like being there. And it was like football Camelot. But uh, those, those, I mean, those two are, are really giants in our profession. And for them to come together like that and for George Hallis to have, to have the intuition and to know that regardless, I can, I can put – hard feelings aside, here's what's best for the franchise right now. So when you were with the Bears in the 80s, how many times did you see offensive players called for offsides? Was it more than last weekend? Well, you know what? Hello. No, it wasn't. Welcome not. back to the future, Coach. Well, it, 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 it was. First of all, I think people back then <laughs> knew how to line up on side. All right, but so <laughs> – so, but you were right, okay. though. Last week, I know what you said last week on the broadcast, <laughs> on the broadcast? was 100% true. <laughs> because as soon as something like that, as soon, and, and we also it saw. It was miraculous, it, wasn't it? We also saw it. <laughs> no, you were 100% correct. And we also saw it uh, with, uh, with with the Eagles, with the tush push, with the you know Kelsey moving the ball forward. Because he had been warned about that, which is, again, you know, an offsides and offsides. So what you said on the – on the, the broadcast was 100% true. Okay, so last week on the OTP, we had a little bit of a discussion. It was great. And it may have gotten a little – I don't think it was really heated. but it was, Yeah, it was. It was and you know what? And it, was loved it. Well, it, was, it was animated. It was animated. We never get mad. But we the, just get – we both want to be right. But Kadarius <laughs> Tony being called offsides for Kansas City in the game against Buffalo with a minute and 12 to go negated – a touchdown for Kansas City that would have won the game. It was not on the last play of the game. Nobody knew it was going to be a touchdown. I totally get that. Coach made the point and totally contradicted himself from dinner, which Rhett would back up because he was at dinner. Rhett was Rhett, – Rhett Didn't he contradict himself from dinner, Rhett? Rhett at the yeah, time was, you did. Yeah, was uh, not paying attention to what we were talking no, about. No, he was eating crap. But <laughs> – uh, he's he's watching, having watching he, Frank Reich out the window. <laughs> <laughs> What's Frank Reich doing out the window? We have this game where I play. This is devolving. Fast, yeah, isn't yeah. It? We have this game that I started last year at the Senior Bowl, where I will look at very poorly uh, adapted editions of a doppelganger. Like we, I said, there's a guy that looks like Mel Blunt racing to practice here at the Senior Bowl, and he looks up, and he sees this guy, he goes, he just starts laughing, and so I, I at dinner in Miami, I said, well, it's nice to see Frank Reich out here having a nice seafood dinner with his family out the through the pane glass window, <laughs> and it kind of looked like Frank it's, Reich. It's uncanny how Rhett can see somebody and just conjure up somebody in his mind because he's that, not right. That looks just that's like why he's him. in the transfer portal. But, <laughs> I, I was with Mac it's, one day and he was picking up his dry cleaning. I said, "Good to see Jimmy Ray came to pick up his dry cleaning today." He had a red hat on, kind of looked like a Forty Nine ers. All right, so we're gonna stop that right now. It's funny, but we're stop that right now. <laughs> so we're watching the Kansas City Buffalo game. Kadarius Tony lines up offsides. My thing is, how do you call that in that instance? And it turns out that it was the first time in nearly 30 years a Kansas City offensive player had been called for offsides. The commissioner jumped, and he and he was offsides. He was, uh, and he and he didn't look to the official properly. 
And it's because Kadarius Tony is Kadarius Tony. If you, you go. believe what you read, he, you know, he didn't. He did. He was. He was offsides. My thing was, I was stunned that they called that because that is a call that literally had not happened to the Kansas City Chiefs in nearly thirty years. Coach Mack, after agreeing with me at dinner, which he pointed out that I paid for, <laughs> um, then comes back when there's no dinner involved and says, oh, no, he was offsides. It was the correct call. So he totally backtracks. I still contended that I was stunned that you would start calling that with a minute 12 left in a game on national television. And then last weekend, Rep. Brian, what happened? Games all over the National Football League. Offensive players are called for offsides. I was kind of taking an it's account amazing. of how many because it was several. It was was one in our game. Yeah, it, it, it was a Christmas miracle. <laughs> 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 so we're so now we're going to call everything. Is that what's going to happen now? Uh, uh, we're going to start calling. I uh, here's here's one thing that you hand know, checks in the backcourt. Here's and, one thing that you know about me and officiating especially this year, I can't tell you what they're going to call. I cannot tell you what they're going to call now. It is so uneven across the board. But it was a Christmas miracle <laughs> that all of a sudden it's revealed. But, but Mac, in all yeah. seriousness, to, to, to follow Mike up, is it going to be one of those things where it's like the points of emphasis that the officiating crews do in the preseason and then it kind of evens out? Rats. Is it going to – before he answers, I, if you call it in the preseason, great. I think it's great. But you're calling it in December? I understand. But these things ebb and flow sometimes, oh. do they not? Well, I, yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I, I mean, you're not – just like he was offsides. Somebody tweeted – Like, if they do this in a Super Bowl, well, somebody's yeah. going to lose their mind. I mean, that's my point. I mean, so – Somebody may lose the game. <laughs> Well, so and the commissioner comes out as I just can't believe that they would get angry about a correct call. It's like so you're going to call this now. We're we're going to start, you know. Wait. I can't believe you wouldn't get angry about lots of incorrect calls. Do but you hey. do you think? That, and again, this is for the OT people that there was a directive saying, "Hey, start looking for this." After that, do I think there was a directive? Or do I think somebody said, you know, we might want to do, we might want to prove that either, we, know, we know to call. The, I don't think there was a directive because. Either or. Because somebody would have gotten a some, hold of a some, directive. Somebody said something. Somebody said something. Yes, they did. I would agree with that. Yeah. Let's I, be looking for this a little more frequently. Mm -hmm. Somebody said something. And to your point, it was probably so that this isn't a glaring red light on top of the head of this one call. Let's start looking for it a little bit. Ooh. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah, so what what they did is water it down a little last bit. weekend they normalized the call. There you go. From the game the that's, week before. And, but it's still like really? That's that's exactly what happened. I loved what Mike Vrabel did with the Trey Avery pass interference calls. Hey. I, I, I thought his his uh how, what he said about it in the Wednesday press conference was pretty brilliant. The first one, he clearly interfered, and he said – Interference. He he broke on the ball too early. Too early. And, and he did. I, I mean, he was in great position, and he bro he, but he did interfere with the guy, no question about it. The second one, he said – what did he say? He played the technique perfectly or I, – I mean, he just uh, – because I, I mean, I went back and watched that again. I can't figure out what that official what, what saw. Did, what did I say on the broadcast about that call? I said it's professional mile malpractice. Practice. I st and the other official went to him. Yes, he did, and appeared to be doing the old. Are you sure what you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can't figure out what he saw. That that's the part of it to me. In certain cases, and Vrabel talks about this a lot, and I think it's a great point that he makes to his players. He says the officials are going to look for certain tells, tells that lead them to make certain calls. So you don't want to, you don't want to push this way or grab this way or, or whatever, or turn a guy, or turn a guy because sure. that that's always going to get you yeah. a, a call against you. Um, but in that case, I 
I couldn't, even from behind, I couldn't figure out what he thought he saw. Well, you know why you couldn't? Because he didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't, uh, anyway. Looked like good coverage. It was good coverage, and it, that's why I, I put it in the category of professional malpractice. That's as nice as I can say it. How about you, Red? The second one? <laughs> I, I couldn't understand it, and we kept watching the replay in the booth. I'm like, Hey, by the way, what about you on the Elijah Molden return? I was excited. Waving in the background. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. He's, He's gone. So we see that. <laughs> that was- and I'm like, whose hand is that? It's, a, <laughs> it's like you were doing a puppet show up there. You're <laughs> just going, bye. Bye. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> that was – that was. That so I knew as soon as he had it, I'm like, He's gone. He's gone. It's over. That was great. Uh, it's also great to – have game on with Duncan. That's right. Titans fans, grab a coffee and kick off the action, whether that's drinking a cup of coffee on the way to the game or grabbing one to go before watching the game at home. Duncan is always there to help you get your game on. Just like the pros, we need to be at our best come game time, which is why Duncan is the most important part of your game day ritual because it's always the best call for football. America runs on Duncan. You know what I love about the Duncan is when we start uh, traveling as a group, you know, once we start going to these things we're going to go to once the season is over with, your senior bowl. Oh, yeah. You are the best with the Duncan app I've ever seen in my life. Thank you. And and we always have – you take our orders, and then when we get in the car, it's it's like a feast. Well, that's the idea is it's, that you, it's, your it, stuff is ready. It's and wonderful. It, it's, it is wonderful, and you rack up points, and you get free beverages and or free sandwiches. I mean, there's all kinds of free. Well, it, it's all free. It's all app. free for me because well, that's right. you buy it. <laughs> that's fair it is fair that's fair it's totally fair um injuries have hit the titans very yes, hard they have and there are guys going on injured reserve there are guys being signed from other teams there are guys being called up from the practice squad it's a it's a difficult time obviously because for the first time since 2015 the titans are out of the playoff race yes with multiple weeks left in the season mike vrabel said that his message to the team is we're taking it one day at a time. We're going to prepare hard every single day. But from a coaching standpoint, when you're trying to motivate a ball club and you also are in a position where you don't exactly know who you're going to have, what's the biggest challenge? Well, that, that, that's, a, that's a double-edged sword. It, it really is because, you know, first of all, you're it, it doesn't really matter where you are during your season. You're always going to try to – improve your roster from the, you know, from the bottom up. You know, we've talked about that a lot. And of course you're always, you're always chumming or churning the bottom of your roster. That's going to happen. But when you're getting ready to play a ball game and, 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 and regardless of what the outcome of the game is, you want to win the game. Sure. And so you want to do everything that you can to prepare it. The thing, and I've been in this situation before as a head coach if you have the right people and you talk to them, they understand that regardless of what of of what the 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 repercussions of this ball game are, you're still playing for your 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 profession. You're still playing for your job, either where you are or where you may be, because of the way we we just talked through talking about the transfer portal in collegiate football. Well, their free agency in the National Football League. I mean, you're you're auditioning for everybody, every snap you ever take sure. in the National Football League, and so. It is. I mean, and you just – you hope – you hope, not hope, you want your team to have built enough inside strength that re, to be able to not overcome the disappointment of not having the playoffs out there as that carrot, you know, that, that you're playing for. You're still playing for your job and you're, you're, you're playing for the continuation of your career, whether it's where you are or whether – it's it's somewhere else, and and the the professional pride of it has to kick in because we all know it's it's extremely it's ex, it, it's a for what we all do to be employed in the National Football League is is really is really not a right of anybody. It's a, it's a privilege to be able to do this, and so when you've got the chance, you've got to put everything out there, regardless regardless of what the external rewards all of a sudden look like. It, you've got to internalize this a lot as a player and even as a coach. 
during these times. You're the greatest example of that, though. Your last game as a head coach was a famous win where you, you came from behind to beat Minnesota. And, I mean, everybody knows that game very well and remembers that down the stretch. Didn't you get invited to Green Bay the next week for the playoff game? And Yeah, it was, it was Josh McCown to, to, to Nathan Poole in the end zone. We, we had no – we had the, the, the Cardinals. I mean, we were really a beat-up – we were down to kind of – but my message during the week, I'm glad you brought that up, was, was the same thing. Hey – Nobody probably even is looking at whether you're going to win this game or not. And, and I'm not going to say nobody cares because we all have people that care about us. But you care. I care. We care. So let's just let's go do this just like we've always done this. And we had to get an onside kick. Look, we had Nathan Poole from Marshall as our receiver. They had Randy Moss. I don't know if, you know. He went to Marshall, too. Yeah, yeah. if there's any kind of a difference. But anyway. Probably so. They were, they, were, they were a really good football team, and we weren't. But the way they played in that, in that ball game, I mean, you know, I got carried off the field by a team that they knew their head coach was not going to be there probably, and some of them probably weren't going to be there. But just that feeling that, that, that you had come together and had worked through all of that, but it comes from, first of all, you know, being honest with yourself, and then being able to 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 look at look in the eyes of your teammates and your coaches, and, and be honest with each other. I'm gonna I'm gonna lay everything else that I have out there, and then we'll we'll take what comes. But uh, if if the force out rule, <laughs> the force out rule was in effect, and you know it's not in effect anymore. But Nathan Poole caught it in the corner of the end zone, fourth and fourth and about 17. Josh McCown ran around, you know, made about six people miss and just flung it up to Nathan Poole, and he was forced out. And then they came back, and you know, there was a force out rule at the time, and so they said, you know, touchdown Cardinals. But those guys, those guys still in my, you know, and I am in touch with. Are they in touch with me a lot? It's still a memory that they all go. Coach Mack, that was one of the greatest feelings in the world. And, yes, I was invited. Uh, you know, Mike Sherman was the head coach of the Packers. The Packers, they, had pl- they, they played the end of the game because if, the, if Minnesota had beaten us, well, then Minnesota was going to the playoffs. The Packers were out. The Packers game finished a little before. Our, they won their ball game. And, you know, of course, nobody thought the Cardinals were going to be. And all of a sudden, they put it on the, all the big boards, and everybody stayed in Lambeau Field to watch it, to watch the end of it. And when it ended, I mean, finally when I got into the – after the press conference, got into the coach's locker room, Mark Hatley was the GM and Mike Sherman was the head coach. They, they were on the phone. Coach Mike, this is, the most, this is fabulous. The, the place went wild. Thank you so much. We want to invite you to the playoff game. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I said, you know what, I probably won't be able to come. I said, how about bringing Nathan Poole to the – and they went, you think he'd come? I said, Call Paul Jensen, who's the PR director. Let's make that work. So they brought Nathan Poole to the playoff game. He's like the Pope waving to everybody out. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> and is- I got, and I got, I got for for months afterwards cheese baskets, you know, from from the the Green Bay fans. Thank you, Coach Mack. Thank you, to, you know, for, for the playoff game. So I had a lot of cheese baskets I could hand out. Well, every time we go, go back, back there, there. He's, he's wildly popular. <laughs> I mean, I call him the mayor of everywhere, but it's really true in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. The Green Bay fans are, are, are legacy oh. fans. Now, they know. They know ball. And so they, hey, Coach Mack, great win over the Vikings. <laughs> I mean, that was a long time ago. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Will Levis going to try to play? I mean, that's. I think that tells you all you need to know about Will Levis. I don't know if he's going to be able to play or not, but he's trying like heck to play. It's clear. If it wasn't before, it's clear. He loves to play ball. Mm-hmm. He loves it. Uh, and, and it's funny you, you bring this up because in his availability this week, you know, we're outside there at the edge of the practice fields and he's at the podium. And the entire time he's fielding questions and answering questions, his eyes are on that practice surface. And you could tell he wanted so badly to just leave us right there and go out and, and put a helmet on it and go practice with his teammates. He, I, I could see it in his facial expression and his eyes darting back and forth as his teammates are coming out of the locker room and getting ready to go through stretching individual. Because nobody would blame anybody if he didn't play. Oh, no, absolutely not. But he wants to play. And that's a 
that love of it is a huge reason why the Titans wanted him. Well, absolutely. And the other thing is you can just tell the way he approaches this. He understands what a great opportunity this is for him. Because let's go back to the draft that we all do very deeply. And and, and him sitting in that green room through, throughout that whole first round and then everybody, you know, you know that wh- wherever he went, when he got the opportunity, he wasn't going to let it go. You could you could see it in him. I've seen enough. I've seen enough young players, and you could just you could see it in him. And so that that's what we've seen. That's what we've seen now. So you're a hundred percent. He you're going to have to you're going to have to hold him back to keep him out of any game. How tough is that going to be for Mike Vrabel and Rand Carthon if they get to? Saturday night, and he's on the fence. He could probably play. What do you do? Well, first of all, it, it, they're going to do what's in his best interest sure. physically. That's what they're going to do. And so that, that overrides everything. And then sometimes, and, and sometimes, I've done it as a coach. I've done it as a head coach. Sometimes you have to protect the players from themselves because they all want to play. Uh, I had a guy like that that, I mean, I thought was – literally going to come across a desk one time and strangle me. And I knew he could was Kyle Vandenbosch. Yeah. When I told him, look, I'm not playing you right now because you're knee. And he, I mean, the, the, the death stare that he gave me and he liked me a lot. I thought he does because we I asked him, okay, good. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad you quantified that. But, you know, we'd taken it. I'd taken a chance and stood on the table for him in the draft room, and he knew that and then had worked through two ACL surgeries with him and all of that stuff. But those kind of guys, it means everything to them. And not only to themselves, they don't want to let their teammates down. They don't want to let their teammates down. And that, that is, that's important. I mean, Will Levis did the same thing at Kentucky when he had the, when he had the toe, and I think they told him, don't play. You know, you can, but we'd, we'd recommend you you don't. The med- and, and he played. Right. So you're correct in saying that it's it's going to be – but they will they will protect him from himself. Seat Geek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, Seat Geek is the place to do it. Seat Geek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So Titans fans can fan. Well done, Rhett. Red is also our staff meteorologist. Sunday is supposed. Christmas Eve is supposed to be lovely at Nissan Stadium. Mike, it is quite the contrast from Christmas Eve versus the Texans one year ago. We had uh, uh, rolling blackouts, uh, power. Yeah, we started saving. that game late. We didn't started we? one hour late. Wow! And wow. it was it was the coldest recorded game at Nissan Stadium. I think it was t- what twenty two, twenty three at kickoff. Right. Uh, so the forecast right now says partly cloudy and a high of 68 degrees, 63 at kickoff. That's a great way to start Christmas Eve day. Yeah, doggone right it is. Because you go from there, you go to church or have a meal, whatever you want to do, open a gift or two, go to the family celebration. Right. Put out the cookies and milk, wait for Santa. I mean. Or if you're like me, when you get home from the game marinate the steaks and get ready to grill Is on that Christmas right? Day. You're going to grill on Christmas it. Day? I sure am. Because you got the weather. Got the weather. But Rhett's a grill master anyway. He really is. He is a grill master. He has shared some of those things that he has, he has prepared on the grill with us. Delicious. It is. New York strip steaks on Christmas Day. I think I'm going to go uh, purchase some kind of seafood, maybe do surf and turf. Wow. Yep. I'll tell you what else is really is really good that I'm noticing here that's really high is the shoe game of my two partners here. If you look you look over here at Mike Keith, those are some sweet, sweet, all white Nike kicks. And then Rhett over here, I mean, these this is outstanding. Plus he matches. Well, he, he does and then plus he's got a little dog on his socks. You know, I'm looking at his socks. He's got a little dog on his sock. I'm I'm impressed with my partners here. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. I mean, I'm, it's the holiday season. I'm a former head coach. I notice details. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to go, don't you think? Whatever you I, say, I think, sir. I think it's time to go for 
for Dave McGinnis and Rhett Bryan. I'm Mike Keith. Thank you for joining us for the OTP. Right